Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher, and welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, now today's video comes from a channel that I like to tell people that if you're not watching it, it is the best channel you're not watching. And that channel is Drawn of History. Now the video that we're gonna be watching today is titled Berlin, Capital of the Cold War. So I'm super excited to check this out. I've loved every video that has come out. He's also been nice enough to let me contribute to some of his videos um, with some voice acting. And it's been a lot of fun to get into. So I'm super supportive of this channel. It is very, very good. If this is the first time that you have uh, seen Drawn of History, make sure that you sub. I'm gonna put a link to the original video down below. Give this video a thumbs up and a sub and share it around so we can get this channel really, really rolling. All right, and with that, there's some links to some other stuff of mine down below. Let's go get started. Okay, West buddy, Berlin, I'll East see Berlin. you tomorrow. Um, aren't you forgetting something? Berlin Wall? My new Elvis record? Uh, uh, do you mind if I borrow it for the night? These Berlin record stores don't have anything like this. We're not getting it back. Uh, I don't know, Dieter. Come on, what do you think's gonna happen? They're gonna build a <laughs> wall overnight that will prevent me from seeing you for like the next 30 years? Literally. <laughs> well, that's oddly specific, but I guess you're right. That could never happen. Auf Wiedersehen, schnitzel. Overnight. <laughs> Great sounds. What the? Hans, is that you? Dieter, what happened? I don't know, I can't get past this wall. Well, can you throw over my record? <laughs> oh, fart. <laughs> awesome. Seriously, the, the Berlin Wall like went up overnight, pretty much without any warning. Just like, started being built in the middle of the night and people woke up one you know the next day and were like what and it immediately caused some logistical problems some people were like um i work across that street i need to get over there like my family's on the other side of this and a whole bunch of myriad of reasons it was it was a problem all right i'm excited let's do this this video is part of project mad a cold war collaboration between your Ooh. favorite history youtubers check out the playlist at the end or in the description below oh, world cool. war ii was wrapping up the allies won and germany was de demonetized but in order <laughs> to make sure that can't do those world symbols war franchise didn't become a trilogy the four main powers made a plan to occupy the defeated nation after rearranging the border, we'll split Germany into four temporary occupation zones. And everyone should pitch in to help rebuild the German economy. Or we could cripple them with reparations until they're dust. We'll try that before it did not go well. Yeah. And we must- I love that. You got like... <laughs> You're like, uh, it's true, but it's taller than the baguette. Get some in to help rebuild the German temporary occupation zones. And everyone should pitch in to help rebuild the German economy. Or we could cripple them with reparations until they're dust. We'll try that before it did not end well. Right. And we must. Of course, that's in reference to uh, the reparations that were put on Germany after World War One, which created economic crisis and social crisis that leads to the rise of Nazism and fascism and Hitler and, you know, the story. Some fair elections in there. Communism! Excuse me? I mean, only if they freely vote for it. <laughs> Let's do the right. same thing. occupied zones. Sounds fine, I guess, as it is right in the middle of Germany. Yeah, Berlin. <sighs> I forgot about America's level of geographic uh, that's knowledge. That's not where Berlin is. You though. do yeah. know that the capital city of Berlin is way yep. in eastern <laughs> Germany, right? It is important to me that you know that. Whatever. This partition is only temporary, right, Russia? Sure. Now come with me, Truman. We need to talk about the temporary partition of Korea. <laughs> You guys go. I have to talk with the Jews about some homeland we promised them 30 years ago. Yep. Oh my gosh, there are so many issues after the war. Every every single one of those things that they all just left for could be a video series unto itself. What happens to Korea and that, you know, splitting that up and then, oh my gosh, then going into from uh, uh, the British are referring to um, the Balfour Declaration, which basically pledged support for the creation of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. That's been a disaster, and it's just like, 
there's so many issues right now, right after the war. I'll go check on French Indochina. So in 19 And that didn't go either. There there's another one we can go to. Um, the <laughs> imperial struggles now of of uh, of of Britain and France and uh, France there is yeah talking about Indochina, which eventually is going to become the Vietnam conflict, which went from you know a conflict between the Vietnamese against Imperial France and winning against that, and then you get a North versus South issue, and then you get North versus the South plus U.S. issue. Another split with each long of the Allies overseeing of a zone of occupation. The British and Americans soon merged and created the buy zone. Guys? Bros. Oh, hi, France. Yeah. Oh, this is not what it looks. What do you think? Come on, man. We already had shirts made. In 1948, <laughs> the buy zone became the tri zone, yeah. but a quad zone would not be in the cards. Because basically, you, you had the four zones, right? The four allies dividing up occupation of Germany. To oversee that. No one country is going to get to oversee the rebuilding of Germany. But the thing is, the British, French, and Americans had largely the same goals for what a post-war Germany would look like. So essentially, they were kind of the same thing in purpose. That's not going to be said about the uh, Soviet Union side, because they're obviously going to want to de develop a, a, a system that's going to be friendly towards the Soviet Union and their economic policies and their kind of just outlook. And uh, so we have an issue right there. It's going to be split. The Soviet Union was too busy expelling Germans out of the newly rebooted Poland, extracting anything of industrial value out of East Germany, and repainting their zone, like the rest of Eastern Europe, in Comrade Red. But when Stalin looked yep. over his newly established Iron, Iron Curtain, Iron he Curtain. said to himself, Those capitalists are up to something. Named by Winston and Churchill. They were. See, to cover the cost of occupation, Soviets had been printing German Reichsmarks like crazy and making it rain. In an attempt to avoid hyperinflation, the Western Allies were about to introduce a new currency, the Deutschmark, but only in the West, which would cause already weak Reichsmarks to flood East, making them utterly worthless. Stalin and we've seen uh, an inflation problem happen in Germany before, and that was a huge part of their economic problems. Furious and decided to hit back. What do you mean you're blocking all the roads, rails, and canals into your occupation zone? You can't do that. How will we get to West Berlin? Show me in our agreement where it says I gotta keep giving you access. You can't find it? That's because it's not there. Dude, come on. Where's the goodwill? We trusted you. Trust me. Time to fly I'm over the top. I'll starve my own people. I used to be on Hitler's side. What don't you get about me? A crisis was you, born. Yeah, you, you can't be surprised with anything Stalin does at this point. You just can't. Look at, look at his history. Okay, gotta find a new way into the West. West Berlin, already struggling to rebuild Locked after the down. war, would soon run out of vital necessities. The Soviet Union, who had been angling to gain all of Berlin from the beginning, had just punked out the West. It would take an ingenious plan to solve this predicament. America go burr? While there was no formal agreement yep. guaranteeing the Western Allies oh. road, rail, and waterway access to Berlin, was one formal agreement guaranteeing the use of three air corridors. Ah, uh, you got my airplane kidding me. Should we shoot them down and start World War Three? Don't be a moron. Jeez, look, they're flying in coal and food and medicine. Actually, I think it's a mail plane. Really? How could you tell? Well, didn't you notice its little balls? The U.S., U.K., and a few others flew a quarter of a Berlin million airlift. flights to West Berlin, providing the city with vital necessities for over a year until the Soviets finally opened access again. Look at that. So it's like over a year. Look at all the flights. Just the Americans alone, 189,000, pushing 190,000 flights. That's just, that's around the clock. I mean, that's just all, constantly. Then add into the British and the French as well. Uh, oh, there's mileage. 134 million miles flown, almost one and a half times the distance to the sun. Now, I got to add that the, the these Western allies, especially with the Americans, took Berlin very seriously. Um, Berlin is where, especially the Americans and Soviet Union, were trying to put on their best face. Because you have these two nations that are the only ones really capable, and they understand it at rebuilding the post-World War II world. And they both want to make it in their own image. And Berlin being a place where these nations are literally toe-to-toe, -to -toe, um, wanted to put on their best face. Because it's like, Berlin is their like guinea pig 
right or whatever and they want to take care of it and they're going to test there and they they can't let that fall because it would be a knock on their entire system otherwise you would not have seen this much effort to fly into a part of a city like you know it's it, it obviously means a lot the Berlin blockade would be the first real battle of the Cold War between America, the Soviet Union, and their allies, and would leave Stalin enraged and embarrassed on a world stage. But then he got the bomb a few months later and perked right back up. It was at this time when the tri-zone yep. Voltroned into the Federal Four Republic of Germany, or West Germany. This was soon followed by the creation of the German Democratic Republic, or West Germany. No, just <laughs> East Germany? What a waste of Easier that way. The 1950s were great for West Germany. Between the new Deutschmark, low taxes, cheap labor, and Marshall Plan money, West Germany had become the largest and most influential economy <laughs> in Europe. And while conditions in East Germany improved as well, they paled in comparison to their Western neighbor. And nowhere yep. was this contrast seen more than in the divided city of Berlin. In 1958, this led Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev to deliver a stern ultimatum to the United States. Yeah, the, the it was undeniable the rate at which the different parts of Germany were developing. Berlin itself between East and West and the East and West Germany. Economically, you know, the, the, the Americans and Western allies are pumping in just incredible amounts of money into Germany. Because again, it's like Germany is like the sandbox and they want to make their best sandcastle there. And then the whole world can see that and understand that, you know, it's it, it should be clear which sort of countries framework or whatever like you should want to follow it should be like the americans should be the capitalists right um and not the soviet union system and that's why they again they take it very very seriously to make sure that um the side that is allied or controlled by the west or the east depending on which side is doing well and it was very clearly developing very unevenly and you saw that i don't know if he'll get to it here but in berlin itself um Many, many people from the East were going to this, uh, the West, even before before the wall was up. Before the wall was up, people were moving East to West. That's where the better opportunities were, economic opportunities. Um, major reason why the wall went up. So, sure, we'll get to that, though. President Eisenhower, I demand that you and your allies pull out of West Berlin. About that. Did you receive the envelope yet? It's not envelope. hard to draw. What the envelope? Come in. Sir, this just... just arrived for you. What this is? <laughs> That's an autographed picture but... of my ass. Feel free to kiss it next time you think you can tell me what to do. Khrushchev wasn't the <laughs> only one mad about Berlin. With the border between the two Germany shut in 1952, West Berlin had become the warp pipe to freedom. Yep. East German leader Walter Albrecht watched as got millions there and of you could people go elsewhere. fled to the West through this loophole, creating a massive brain drain. If fifths of the East German population has left, many of them doctors and engineers yep. and skilled workers. So Very what important. do we have left? Well, it says here the majority of remaining East Germans hang the toilet paper under instead of over. Oh! Scheiße. I'm surrounded by doom cops. I've got to make a call. Let them rot on the other side of the wall. Yeah, that is an important detail to understand that the uh, intellectuals were the ones, uh, and, and highly skilled people, were going to the West Side, right? Soviet system had always tried to emphasize the, the, the common worker, right? Um, but the elite you'd always felt they didn't have an elite status really. And they, they felt the West was a better place for them to practice their trade, right? Doctors, engineers, whatever. And that's a problem too. It's not just losing people. Like they're saying a fifth of people crossing, but really important people that you can't just replace. Hello. Nikki, it's Vali. Like they use the, Remember the decline on renovation the project we discussed? What? Uh, yeah, whatever. Do it. I'm going back to sleep. In the dead of night between <laughs> August 12th and 13th, 1961, the wall would start to be constructed. Here we go. Almost 100 miles of barbed wire and torn up streets meant not to keep West Berliners out, but yep. instead to keep East Germans in. Right. And what did the Western Allies do? Pretty much nothing. What could you do? 
Instead of having to deal with Eisenhower, Khrushchev was now up against President John F. Kennedy, who had just taken the L with the Bay of Pigs the invasion. Bus. Khrushchev was emboldened and said, Berlin is the testicles of the West. Every time I want the West to scream, I squeeze on Berlin. Sir, it's not your job to squeeze the testicles of the West. That's her job. Oh, Marilyn One Monroe. man whose testicles refused to be squeezed was American General Lucius D. Clay. Having previously ordered the Berlin airlift, he was back in Berlin as a special advisor. When he found out that American diplomats were being denied access at the crossing known as Checkpoint Charlie, he sent 10 tanks to the border. The Soviets matched this with 10 tanks of their own, yep. and the world held its I mean, breath. That's right. I mean, that's the closest they physically, I mean, get to a war. I mean... You know, people are talking about war starting, a World War III. The Soviets matched Here's where it may start. Of their own, and the Literally, tanks pointing at each other. It was happening, trying to show off, you know, a, a position of strength here. world held its breath. Show One of the many times the world held its breath. They just talked before about, uh, they mentioned Kennedy's, you know, problem with the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was another one of those points that uh, many felt was the verge, potentially, of nuclear war. And maybe a World War Three happening. Keep your eyes on the lead tank Early commander. 60s are rough. I got him, sir. He can't be more than 50 meters away. I can see his scowl, his wispy blonde hair, his eyes blue like the Siberian sky, piercing through me like a child. It's falling for him. Nesting dolls until my final curious form is exposed. Oh, how can a war so cold leave my world so warm? What? Whatever. Just got word that the Ruskies are going to pull back, so we are too. Let's get out of here, boys. While diplomats would be able to cross again, the same could not be said for most East Berliners. Still, many brave Germans devised methods yeah, to escape, including digging tunnels. Very, very specific permission to be able to cross. You have to have all kinds of documentation, probably escorts. Uh, but yeah, regular folk, you know, you're sorry, you're not leaving. Hitching a ride on West Berlin subways that ran under the East, jumping out of buildings, walking tight ropes, using hot air balloons, and even crashing yeah. stolen military vehicles through the wall. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> but for the thousands that succeeded in crossing, Suka. hundreds died in the attempt. That's because yeah, successful attempts led to more drastic additions to the wall. What started off as barbed wire and cinder blocks evolved into 12-foot walls, yep. a well-lit sandy death strip, 300 watchtowers, armed guards, attack dogs, anti-tank obstacles, as well as occasionally landmines, motion-censored machine guns, and sharks with freaking laser beams <laughs> attached to their heads. <laughs> yeah, once the wall hit these proportions, then it was, I mean, it was basically impenetrable. Um... But yeah, it's one of the most heavily fortified monitor borders probably that's ever existed. Okay, maybe not the last one, but you get the idea. And for 30 years, the city continued to be divided. <laughs> West Germany would continue to thrive, and East Germany would admittedly become the most advanced nation in the Eastern Bloc, which is the equivalent of saying you're the sexiest creator in a history yeah. YouTuber collaboration. But East Berlin did come up with the Ampelmann, the cutest looking pedestrian traffic symbol ever. Look at him going about not caring about the Stasi secret police monitoring his every move. And now he's like, stop, comrade, embrace global socialism. During the rest of the 60s and 70s, the US and Soviets engaged in proxy wars in Asia, the Middle East, yeah, Africa, and Latin America. But in Germany, the two superpowers were content to let things stay the same. Partially because of all the nukes, partially because it felt like a wall was better than a war and partially because all the other places weren't white but for the same reason that they don't like so i mean then they are just literally right close to each other those other places again were proxy wars where the united states soviet union were not as close in proximity to each other like they were berlin or germany as a whole americans grew Portugal, tired Spain. of a game where you play forever and still have no one win so in 1980 they elected former actor ronald reagan no 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 not, not him yeah there you go <laughs> generals I want us to build a strategic defense initiative so we can put missiles and lasers in space to beat the Ruskies. Yeah, Star Mr. Wars. President, I'm pretty sure that's impossible. Oh, yeah? Well, what do you call this? That man's playing Galaga. Oh. Do you have any jelly beans? And on the other side... Hey, you know what, though? Again, they literally, they called it Star Wars. If you just talk about enough, I mean, maybe the Soviets have no idea how close you are to actually having that kind of technology that can just shoot stuff in space. Um, but hey, if you talk about it, can't hurt, right? Out of the possible nuclear holocaust, the Soviet Union selected Mikhail Gorbachev, Gorbachev who unlike his predecessors, 
sought real reforms. The most noteworthy were perestroika, or the restructuring of the economy, Glasnost? and glasnost, or an openness in the government. Okay, I set up this every cold to war test you've ever taken. and let the people question their government. Let's see what we got. What is banana? Oh, it's good question. Good question. How does this person not know what a banana is? No one behind the Iron Curtain has actually had a banana. I think it's food. Or possibly small breed of dog? <laughs> you put this in here, didn't you? Duh. So, what is banana? <laughs> Gorbachev also had a decidedly more loose hand on the nations in the Eastern right. Bloc. When Poland had free elections for the first time and voted out most of the communists, Gorbachev was like, that's cool. And when Hungary said it was taking down its electrified barbed wire fence with the West and then having a pan-European picnic and inviting East Germans and giving them food and Deutschmarks and directions to the now barely guarded border, Gorbachev said, sounds great. The cracks in the Iron Curtain were showing, but yeah. to many in East Berlin, Falling apart. coming across over two or three different countries to see their friends and family in West Berlin, well, that just sounded like freedom with extra steps. Yeah. So a newly reform-minded East people German were finding government it set out to gradually ease travel finding restrictions. On November 9th, 1989, they released a press statement that probably could have used another round of proofreading. Stasi officials would appreciate it if such kicking and wailing would be kept to a minimum during abductions. Next item, East Germans will be able to apply at borders for a visa to travel to West Berlin. And finally... Wait, what? When does this go into effect? Doesn't quite say here. As far as I know, it takes effect immediately, without delay. Hold on one moment. Uh. Yes? Sir, I'm stationed down here at the Brandenburg Gate. Are you sure the new policy starts today? I think so. Why? Is anyone there? Yeah. Everyone. We got a couple. East Everyone. Berliners flooded into their neighboring city, hugging friends, family, and fellow Germans for the first time in decades. What the hell is that? The wall Flock of seagulls, baby! Down. The next year, the nation itself would be brought together, and by 1991, the rest of the Eastern Bloc, the Soviet Union itself, and the Cold War would come to an end. So this is banana. Ah. Why you stop? Oh, I know. You want people to watch the next video on the Project Mad playlist about the Cold War of conflict between glorious Soviet Union and capitalist pigs. Or maybe watch other video by Propaganda Minister Drawn of History. Ooh, or join the collective by supporting channel on Patreon. Da? Ah. Banana is good. Skin is a little chewy, but overall... Yeah, he bit good. through it. Awesome, let's talk about this. All right, another instant classic from, from John of History. It's a great humor, good history of... I mean, really, that was just the, the, largely just a history of the Cold War in general, not just the Berlin part. But yeah, it showed about the um, kind of what had happened and then why it happens and the effects you know of the of the the berlin wall i mean when that when that wall eventually came down and people started coming across i mean a lot of people look at that as like that that was the physical representation of the end of the cold war and the end of the soviet union end of communism okay in in, in eastern europe um largely okay but um at least in the soviet union okay so yeah, it's a big part of the Cold War. It's just, yeah, it's it's where the, the 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 nations put their best face on right there. And you have this, like, physical wall that is, like, a physical representation of really this new world, right, that has begun since World War II happened. And that there's literally a wall, and the war the world is one of two ways. It's what it's like on this side of the wall or this side of the wall. And the United States and Soviet Union wanted everybody to pick a side, right? You may not have a wall there. But you should be picking a side. And that's what a lot of those proxy wars are about. Um, so anyways, Berlin Wall, big part of the Cold War and of uh, the, specifically the, the the height of it as well. Because that's when it um, was erected there in the early 60s. That's when things were getting um, very close to potentially being a war that a lot of people thought was very likely to happen. All right, anyways, uh, another great job from John of History. I look forward to more videos there. Again, if you like this video, um, this original video, link is down below. Make sure you go give the view, like, subscribe, 
help uh help drawn of history out join the patreon and all that stuff and if you liked kind of my commentary or what i'm doing here you can give this video you're watching right now a thumbs up would be awesome if you haven't subbed love to have you around um links to some other stuff down below like our discord server my uh gaming channel that i do a lot of streaming on and some other fun things too all right with that we'll see you next time bye